guys thanks so much for joining me today today I'm doing the paranormal tag that bunny made up for all of us um, in the paranormal community on YouTube I was so happy bunny when you did this for us um, actually it was really weird because right before you announced that you were going to do this I actually was searching around YouTube for a paranormal tag and I found it very weird that nobody actually did one of these yet so having said that um, let me just get right to the tag because it's a lot to say in 15 minutes. Um, the first question is, how old were you when you had your first paranormal experience? Um, I would have to say that I was three or four years old when I had my first paranormal experience. Um, when I was a little girl, I used to play with another little girl in my parents' house named Jennifer. Now, we didn't have another little girl in the house. As you know, I'm the youngest in my family. and. Um, they chalked it up to my imaginary friend and up until I was 12 years old when my oldest niece was born, um, we pretty much forgot about it when I got a little older and grew out of it. Um, then when my eldest niece was a toddler, she started talking about Jennifer. And you know, that could be coincidental or what have you, but when I had my son when I was 21, I actually lived with my parents and my son too played with Jennifer in this house. Now, all three of us described her in the same way. She was a little girl with dark hair, or an old-fashioned, you know, dark calico-like dress. Um, so I would have to say that was definitely my first very awesome paranormal experience. Um, second question, have you always believed in ghosts? I have absolutely always believed in ghosts my entire life because I was never taught any different. My parents especially my father is a hardcore paranormal nut like me um, except he goes more towards the alien abductions and UFOs where I lean towards the ghost and you know all that good stuff goes hunting and we meet in the middle with the cryptids because we both love cryptids um, my mother always said don't fear the dead fear the living so in other words when you see a ghost don't be afraid fear more the people you see out on the street you know, strangers and what have you. So yes, definitely always believed in ghosts. The third question is, what is your favorite place to do a paranormal investigation in? And that would have to be my parents' house because that is the most haunted house that I know. Now growing up there, um, seeing an apparition, um, hearing a disembodied voice, hearing somebody running down the stairs when you know that everybody is downstairs in the same room as you was a normal occurrence. If that happened, it was like, yeah, that's the ghost. We didn't freak out, we didn't, you know, get upset. We were just like, yep, ghost, and that was it. When I went back there as an adult to ghost hunt, I've gotten so many different voices, and it's just been phenomenal. So, it have definitely, right now, has to be my favorite place to ghost hunt. The fourth question is, what is your favorite tool to use when investigating? And, like Bunny said, visual voice recorder is my first. Um, obviously, I love getting EVPs. You can hear EVP on my channel. I have six videos now of it. Um, most of it was captured in my parents' house. I think just one of them wasn't um, it's an invaluable tool when you're ghost hunting. And the second one is the eSmog Scout. What this is is an EMF reader, but it isn't your average EMF reader. It actually converts EMF into sound for you. So theoretically, it can turn the EMF that a spirit is giving out into white noise and if they're talking you can hear their voices. I've heard whispering on here before so I think it works you know. I think if anything you can definitely use it as a pretty neat EMF detector. Um, the next question is what is your scariest experience? I do not want to tell you that right now only because I am going to be doing a video on my channel that I've been promising my subscribers since I started my channel that me and my husband are going to be doing together. Um, I will have that up within the next two weeks, I promise you guys. Um, I will tell you my second scariest experience and that has to do with um, something that happened to me in my parents' house when I was a teenager. I was 16 or 17 years old I was playing with my cat, I was hitting a ball around with a broom for her, and I hit it from the kitchen into the dining room, we were playing around in there, and from the hallway that the dining room goes into, I heard a voice say, can I play too? So when I looked up into the hallway, I actually saw a boy standing there, and he was about 16 or 17 years old, I'd say, my age. Could have been older, could have been younger, I don't know, you know. It just 
struck me that he was a teenage boy also. Not that I was a teenage boy, but you know what I mean. And <laughs> he was wearing period clothing, like turn of the century period clothing, a newsboy cap, suspenders, a white shirt. I didn't check what pants he had on because as soon as I saw him standing there grinning at me ear to ear, I took off and ran into the kitchen where my mother was. And you can hear the whole story. I have a video of that on my channel too. It's called Ghost Boy. I can link it here. And I'll tell you, he was one of the clearest full body apparitions I've ever seen. I've seen plenty, but he was just like you or me where he was solid. He was not see-through or anything like that. And that was scary. I mean, I would handle it better as an adult now, but as a teenager who was just learning about the paranormal, it was scary. Um, favorite ghost hunting experience is the next question, and I would have to say that that was the time that I was actually using the e-smog scout and the voice recorder at the same time. I was by myself, and I was walking down the hallway of my parents' house, and as I was getting down the hallway closer and closer to where the attic would be, leading up to the attic, I was getting more EMF. When I got to where you would turn to go to the attic, I said, is this where you are? Because I was getting such a high spike of the EMF. So when I played back the recording, when I say, is this where you are, you can clearly hear a little girl or a little boy's voice say, mm-hmm. I have to talk to you. For more reasons than one, that is my favorite ghost hunting experience. Um, I felt that that child was reaching out to me saying, I know you're here lady to talk to me and I want to talk to you. I feel that they used all the energy they could use that day or however it works. We all can't be sure how it works yet to talk to me. Um, I feel bad for the child because it is you can tell by the voice it is a small child, so it's emotional for me. Um, you can hear that EVP on my channel as well. I'll link it here. Um, it was very impressive. It was probably my favorite EVP, one of them. Seven is, do you know anyone else personally who has paranormal experience? My whole entire family has had paranormal experiences in their house, in my parents' house that we grew up in, as I said. Um, as for still having it, I know I do. I believe my sister still has paranormal experiences. I know my husband has had paranormal normal experiences that he was involved in with me. That was my scariest ever paranormal experience. Um, my nieces, especially one of my niece, nieces, I know is like, she has mediumship qualities to her. She can see people who have passed over and better than I can. I mean I see apparitions but she can see people when other people cannot see them there and it's amazing. Um, and some of my friends have had experiences with the paranormal and I think it's it's phenomenal. Um, number eight is do you have trouble convincing friends and family about your paranormal experiences? No, I actually have never told anybody a ghost story and they've said you're full of it. Um, maybe some skepticism, but never, you know, trying to tell me I'm lying. I think honestly, the more I talk about it to people, the more they come out and tell me their experiences. So I think it's a really positive thing that I am more open about it now. Um, actually, it's really neat. I think it's kind of weird that people like to hide their ghost experiences because they're afraid that people are going to be like, you're crazy. And it's just amazing that now that I come out and say it to people, they're like, oh, well, I saw a ghost too. This is what happened. And it's just great, you know? Favorite paranormal show or movie? Um, as I said in the comments of Bunny when she posted this, I love A Haunting and I want to show you guys the box set because you guys can get this and watch it if you've never seen this. It was on the Discovery Channel in like the mid-2000s it premiered. I think um, it's a great show. It's scary. It scares me. Um, the next one would be Unsolved Mysteries. This pack here has all the ghost stories they ever did on the old Unsolved Mystery shows from like the late 80s and early 90s. And Bunny, this is for you because I know you like skeletons and skulls. I thought you would think that that was pretty awesome. And 
my favorite fictional paranormal show is Supernatural. And my favorite paranormal movie is The Orphanage. This is actually in Spanish, so it's English subtitles. And they are remaking it in English now, but this is actually from the makers of Pan's Labyrinth. So if you ever saw that movie, you know it's an excellent movie, and this one is... I like this one better, actually, because, you know, I love the paranormal. The next one is what it would be my dream place to investigate, and that would actually be the St. Augustine Lighthouse in St. Augustine, Florida, because I love lighthouses and I love ghosts, and that is a very famously haunted lighthouse. And it would also be the Myrtles Plantation, which is down in Louisiana, which is a very famously haunted plantation, one of the most haunted plantations in the United States. I actually read a book on the Myrtles Plantation um, when I was in my earlier 20s, and I actually had the book, the guy at the bookstore order it for me because they didn't have it in the bookstore, and it was a phenomenal book. I will be doing a book review on my channel about that book eventually, but the Myrtles Plantation, so much murder and just bad things happen there, and it is so haunted. The next question is, do you prefer to investigate alone or in a group? I would say a group because, as Bunny said, it's safer if you're going out into the field. At my parents' house, I don't mind being alone, but if I'm, you know, in buildings that might be falling down, it's safer. If something happens to you, you don't want to be caught like a turtle on its back and you can't move and, excuse me, you can't move and a ghost isn't going to come down and save you, you know? I don't think they might, but um, it's definitely safer to go in groups. Um, I like to mentor my nieces in this because they're so interested in it and I believe they have some sort of um, sensitivity gifts. As I said, one of them has mediumship gifts. She's showing the signs of it. So I like to mentor them in this. They're so interested in it, so I take them along with me. They're not tiny children. I'm not taking seven, eight-year-olds with me. They're older teenagers. Um, definitely in a group. Is your house haunted? I would say this house that I live in now is probably haunted. I have seen a guy walking around in here that I've mistaken for my husband several times and I've been after him, talking to him, and like, why aren't you talking to me? And I'm around the corner and he's gone and he'd be in the bedroom and he'd be like, my husband would be in the bedroom and he'd be like, what are you talking about? Who are you talking to? And I'd be like, did you just go into the kitchen? So I definitely think there is a spirit of a man here. I saw a shadow person in this house before, it was the only time I've ever seen a shadow person. And it takes us on to the next question, which is, have you ever had a paranormal experience with animals? And it's like Bunny said in her video, she saw a shadow cat, well I've seen a shadow dog in here, and it was actually a Datsun, and you guys are saying, well you have a Datsun, Emma, and I do, I have a little Datsun, but when she's not in the house, sometimes I see a shadow Datsun walking around in here. Now, I never told you guys this, but last summer, we had to put our first dots in that we had to sleep. She was only a year and a half old, and it was a very hard thing for us, but within like the last three weeks, I have been seeing my dots and running around in here when she's outside or she's in her crate when we're getting ready to go to bed. My dogs sleep in crates, and I see the little dots and run around the corner. Sometimes she comes into this room. I'm like, that has to be Daisy, the one that we put to sleep because she was so sick, and it's comforting to know that your animals are still around, you know? I actually saw my childhood dog in this house, which was really weird. I walked into my room one day and just laying on my bed with her head up looking right at me was my childhood dog, Moochie. And she disappeared within like five seconds. I just stared at her and I was like, why are you here? And it was comforting to know maybe she just wanted to come visit me, but she was never in this house. So that was a, little, a bit strange for me. Um, and in my parents' house, when, at times that we never even had a dog, all of us at one time or another have heard a small little dog barking upstairs. Um, it was unexplainable. I mean, we'd just be sitting in the kitchen and all of a sudden there'd be like, woof, 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 and we'd be like, what is that? So I've had experience with disembodied animal voices. Um, I talk about that more on my channel too in a video called Disembodied Voices. So thank you guys for watching my tag of the paranormal tag video. And I really appreciate all the support from my subscribers, and thank you, Bunny, for making this tag video. It's awesome. Bye!